possible because the lion from the tribe of Judah became the Lamb of God on your behalf so that you can become a child of God. This is the good news. This is the one who's worthy of your worship. Stay standing. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, stay standing. Let's give Jesus a crazy praise. Woo! Jesus! We give you glory. We give you glory. Well, real quick, before we enter into the message, I'd like to pray right now for them in Burkina. And I don't know about you. I don't fight laying down. I fight standing on my feet. Come on. So let's just lift them up corporately in prayer. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, however, in the understanding. But let's pray. Everybody just begin to pray. So, Father, we just lift up Apostle Tom and Katie. We ask for wisdom, God, to be released to them on how to establish this school. We ask for your grace, your power, and your anointing to establish this ministry, God. We ask that you would deliver and defend from any weapon that would be formed against, God. We ask that you would move on their behalf, God. We thank you that you you're a wall of fire, the word says, that your peace guards their mind and their heart, God. We just pray a blessing over them. We ask for your grace to be upon them to preach and to teach and to build up those in that region. Thank you, Father. We lift them up. Amen. You may be seated. Just be ready, though. We're going to have fun today, okay? So, yeah, my name is Jared. I'm just so privileged to be here to communicate God's word. But I do need your help today. Um, the goal for you is not to hear from me. Yeah. Amen. The goal is for you to hear from God. And that's my goal. So if you guys could just be praying for me and expectant that, that God would speak through me exactly what you need to hear on this day. Amen? Are you guys in agreement? Yeah. I only heard like two amens. Somebody say amen. I need to know you're with me. Okay, I need you guys to be responsive so I can teach this message, okay? So if, if, if I might have to come down if you're sleeping, tap you on the shoulder. So I need you to participate with me. If there is a possibility, I didn't see Jeff. Is Jeff here? Is, if there's a possibility, Jacqueline, anybody that could play keys, I would love some keys played while I preach if that's a possible. Anybody that can play the piano or set that up, if we could work on that. Okay, so I am excited. How many know that it's just been a journey for us in this last season of learning about the kingdom of God and beginning to now align our lives with the kingdom? Amen? Amen. So I'm so grateful for the teachings uh, of our apostles t helping us to get in alignment with everything that God has paid for and everything that God wants for us. So, I have a question for you, and it's this. How many of you like when, Am when you order something on Amazon, and all of a sudden, you're at home, and you're like, yes, I have exactly what you need. Here it is at your door. How many people like that? Just what, It's coming to your door. Is that, is that amazing? How many of you would like it if everything in your life came to you in that same way? Come on, not only two? What the heck? Well, I want to help you discover that because that's one of God's promises. Is he's saying that all of your needs, everything that you need will be added to you. And it'd just be like Amazon. Oh, you know, I, I just love that. We're like, Amazon's here. What do we get? Yay. It's so, it, it, it's so fun. Amen. So I want to take us on a journey that there's, there's benefits in the kingdom of God. But there's also rules and regulations and protocols. There's things that we need to do to align ourselves with the king's interests and his governments. Okay? And so we need to know what that, what that is so we can receive the benefits and also not receive the opposite. So I want us to read the scriptures today as Apostle Katie was saying, like, man, we're going to read the scriptures. So we're going to turn our Bibles to Matthew 5. And if we can get the scriptures up there to follow along the New King James, that would be great. And my wonderful, beautiful wife is going to read the scriptures. Wow. 
There is going to be a point where I would like you to write some things down. We always encourage you to write notes, but there's going to be just a, a small portion that I would like you to either write down or put in your notes that really kind of break down what I'm trying to teach and just make it really simple for you. How many of you guys like when you buy something new and you have like 15 pages of instructions and you like that? You're, so I'm trying to take, get rid of the 15 pages and just give you the uh, one page today, amen? Okay, if we could start. Um, we're gonna turn our attention to the word of God. Do we have a Matthew 5 on the screen? Absolutely wonderful, okay. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things. Sorry, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, I may need some help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will no means pass away from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and then there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce 
But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not, I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks, and from him who wants to borrow from you, from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you, great, if you greet your bre brethren only, what do you more, <laughs> what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. We'll stop there for a second. So Jesus is on the mount, and he's giving the Sermon of the Mount that everybody knows, and you'll see in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, that's all one sermon. And what he's talking about is he's talking about the kingdom. And he's talking about many different things in the kingdom, the, the laws of the kingdom, the morals of the kingdom, the heart intent of how we operate with one another, our brother and our marriages. He's talking about how the kingdom works, okay? And then Jesus also further goes to say that all of these parables that he was that he communicated in the gospels are about the kingdom. So Jesus is talking about there's a kingdom that's coming and I need to tell you about this kingdom because there's new ways that this kingdom operates. And so as you read the scriptures, you'll begin to see what Jesus is saying. <clears throat> he said, unless your righteousness exceeds the Pharisees, well, guess what? Our righteousness does because we have Christ's righteousness. We have his righteousness. So we now have exceeded the Pharisees and we can enter into the kingdom of God. But the thing is, is our salvation was completely paid for by Jesus Christ. We can never work or earn to pay for our salvation. Our righteousness comes from him. But then we get a deposit upon the spirit and the spirit of grace empowers us to be lawful biting as citizens, to walk in accordance with his ways and his kingdom. So we still have an opportunity to walk in righteousness. See, in the past, we never could walk in righteousness because we were bound by sin. And we had a, a sinful nature contrary to the nature of God. But now when you've been born again, you have his spirit, his nature, his grace. And so now we can actually fulfill the law. See, we don't obey the law to receive grace. That's what religion is but we receive grace to obey the law. Amen. So now because we have grace, it's not a permission to sin, but it's a, per, it, it, it's an empowerment for us to live rightly before him because no matter what, we couldn't do it on our own. So as you see, the uh, Matthew five begins to talk about the ethics of the kingdom, the, the morals of the kingdom, and even some of the the laws and some of the, the order of the kingdom. We're going to read, um, we're going to read um, chapter six. And the last verse is going to be our focal point for our lesson today. Amen. So follow along with me because these, we're going to build upon these scriptures. It's really important that you're paying attention and really receiving from every word. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Take nice. heed Good job. that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will him himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you have need real, of. Real quick, let's pause on that. Your Father knows what you need. Your Father knows what you need. You don't have to beg him. You don't have to scream a bunch of words over and over and over again. Your Father knows what you need. I just really wanted to hit that point as we continue. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for, that, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Okay, let's pause right there. There is a reward in the kingdom. But he's saying there's a way, God's ways are higher than our ways, and there's a way to conduct yourself in the kingdom, and when you do that in agreement with the kingdom, you receive a reward. Let's continue. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the Real body... Quick, we'll pause on that one. So it says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So this is why Apostle Tom says, God doesn't need you to give because he needs something. It's about your heart. So if you're putting your money into all of these things in the world that are temporal... That shows that your heart is more focused on the world than the king and the kingdom. And so the evidence of our priorities being focused on God's heart and his kingdom is what we're putting our money into. Are you with me? Only two people. Are you with me? Okay. Thank you. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay, let's pause on that. So if your eye is single and it's good, then how great is that light? The knowledge, the revelation, the word. God is the light. It's revelation. It's knowledge. It's understanding. It's illumination. So what he's talking about here is because the whole thing's about the kingdom. It says, if your eye is only focused on my kingdom, which is good, 
you will be full with, with the light of the kingdom. But if you're focused on those things that actually have darkness in it, then how much will you be full of darkness? Okay? You know, the, we've been translated, the Bible says, out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light of his dear son. Hallelujah. And, and we know Satan's kingdom operates in darkness. And really, many times you see the word darkness, the, uh, the, the, the original word means ignorance, lack of knowledge. So many things are happening in our life because we have a lack of understanding of knowledge of God's ways and his kingdom and how we can now get our life to fit inside with what his plan is. And that's where the safety is. That's where the blessing is. So we'll continue. Thank you. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Okay, let's pause right there. So when there's ever a therefore, we need to figure out what it's there for. Okay? So he says, therefore, and right there he's talking about you can't serve two masters. You cannot be in the world and in the kingdom. And the priorities of the kingdom have to be first and foremost in every area of your life. Because if you partially serve the kingdom, you, you'll, you, you won't be a good master of the world and vice versa. And if you, you, you serve the world, you can never serve the kingdom. You have to be all in. And so that is many of our problems is we are not all the way in. And many of us, we serve God the way that we feel like we want to serve God. Okay, God, you said in your word to serve. Okay, I'm going to serve in this ministry on this day. Okay, God, you said to give. No, I'm not giving the, the, the 300, the 500 that you told me to give. I'm going to give the $20 or the $40, right? And so we justify it. Sometimes we deceive ourselves saying, well, I'm serving God. I'm serving God. I'm doing what he wants. But really what we're doing is we're deceiving ourselves. And so we have to, in a kingdom, there is no democracy. So sometimes we, we that can't come into the kingdom. The kingdom, every, the king owns everything. It's all his assets, all of his resources. And the citizens, they have benefits. They have um, uh, the commonwealth of the king. And as they serve the king's interests, they get the benefits from the king. But the first thing is, is we have to get everything in alignment where his interests, is, his purposes, his will, his word, his ways are our ways. And as we begin to align ourselves, we begin to receive all of his blessings. And then as we're faithful stewards and we're trustworthy, he entrusts us with more. Amen. Let us continue. So why do you worry about your about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Mm. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Praise the Lord. Make some noise for that. Come on, that's a good word. How many of you have been consumed with worry where it's taken over your focus at times? It's taken your time. Come on, I need some honest people. I got three honest people in here. 
He, Jesus is saying that because people have a tendency to do that. He's saying, don't worry, because I know humans worry. And he says, you lack faith. What he's saying is you lack trust in how good of a father I am. And you're focused on the wrong things. I'll provide those things. Focus on my kingdom. And those things shall be what? How many want to be added to today? Receive it. <laughs> See, now I'm feeling something. I'm feeling. I'm, I'm feeling it. How we get added to is by the knowledge and understanding of the kingdom. And then we repent and we add works to our faith and we align. We change our lives to align with his kingdom. And when you come into alignment, if you come under a cloud that's raining, you get rained on. So you got to come under where the blessing is. Does that make sense? Everybody say, we want that. that. Say, we want that. that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's our main passage today. I want to talk to you. What, we've, been, we've been preaching this. Tom has been preaching it. Brad, for all of the leaders here, we've been preaching the kingdom. So after today, you can go back if you haven't seen it. We're talking about many different aspects of the kingdom. And I want to encourage you today. My goal for you is just to provoke you to really dig in the word yourself, see these teachings, and begin to align your life with the kingdom so that all of the benefits and the blessings from the king can come your way. Amen? So I wanted to tell a little bit of a story of my life to just kind of encourage you and kind of show you that this is possible. Okay? Um, So it didn't always happen where things were being added to me. But I believed it. So I never changed what I believe because I wasn't seeing a result. I just took responsibility on myself and I said, you know what, I, there's something else I need to learn more. Because I know God's outlined it in his words, his promises are true, but there's something in my life that maybe I need to change. Maybe mindsets I need to change, maybe healing, maybe freedom, maybe there's, there's something holding me back from this promise being a reality. And sometimes, like Abraham, it's through the waiting that we receive the promise. But nevertheless, I don't ever let my results justify what the Word says. I always believe the Word, and I I keep working in my life to partner with God until my life looks like the Word, right? And I said this to Tom, uh, Apostle Tom one day. I was like, you know, Deuteronomy says that we should be blessed and that we should lend to nations. And I looked at him when I was in Africa one day and I was like, you're literally lending, you're, you're lending to nations. You're walking in this promise. I want that. And so it, with humility, I'm like, this, this man is walking, he's walked further than I am. He's walking in more promises. God is doing more in his life than I have. And so I'm like, man, I need to follow this man as he follows Christ. And if we see somebody that's further along or having more success, maybe it's just in one area of their life. They're doing very good in finances. Then in humility, we say, hey, what are you doing? Because the world knows many of the principles of the kingdom, and they're using those principles for the wrong reason. Right? The, the Pharisees knew the law, but they had the wrong heart. So you can use the principles and have the right, wrong heart. But with God's blessing, the Father, he knows your heart. And, and so he wants us to come into alignment with his principles, but have the right motive in heart. Amen? That's why we have family. Family's like, hey, your tone was kind of not like Christ right now. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. What's this inside of me right now? Okay, I'm going to take a minute and breathe. So we see in Matthew, uh, well, I'll finish this story. So this has been the story of our life where things have been added to us, but it, it, took, it just took me to continue on the process of denying myself and seeking his kingdom, right? Giving even when it hurts, giving even when I don't have a good attitude. Just give, 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 give. You give until you become a giver. Just give. 
But the goal is, is that your heart would be transformed, that the place that you give from would be joy, and that you would have this understanding that you're not an owner of anything that you have, but you're a steward. You're a governor of the king's properties. And it's his. And he says, if you do with my resources what I want you to do, then I will resource you abundantly above all you can think and all you can imagine. And God is a good father, and I just believe that he doesn't want us just to have enough to just do his missions. He just wants to make sure our motives are right first. But when you, when, when, when seeking the kingdom and his righteousness is first in your life, and he knows it from his heart, and everything in your life, he can look at your life and say, yes, this is aligned with my kingdom. Then that's when the, the abundant blessings come. But if we're seeking the, those blessings first, those material objects first, then we're already out of order, right? If we're seeking material things rather than his kingdom, it's really just taking our focus. He's like, just focus on my kingdom. Those things will be added. And so this has been the story of my life and my wife. Maybe she can help me. So our most recent one was we were talking about uh, wanting an espresso machine. And we're like... She's like, I want some espressos. And if my wife prays for something, we got it. I'm serious. One day we were here and she's like, I really want to buy a coffee today. I was like, well, you know, we've been buying a lot of coffees, like a lot. I was like, if it's God, you know, I believe God will do it. Let's pray. Why don't you pray for God to make a way? So we're here just stopping by. And all of a sudden, what was it, Michael? Michael pulls up, lives far away in Tacoma. He's just like, I just felt I had to come here. And he's like, I just felt I had to give you this money. And it was like, what, 20 bucks or something like that. And it paid for our coffee. We're like, thank you, Jesus. I mean, God will send somebody from Tacoma, put on their heart to stop by because he gives through men. He moves on the hearts of men to give into our bosom as we give faithfully. So then the espresso machine, we were just, you know, we're just talking about it. And we didn't even, we're getting to the point where we don't even pray. We're getting to the point where God says, I will grant the desires of your heart. It becomes a desire in my heart. And then like Amazon, hello, we're here with your espresso machine. What the heck? We didn't even ask for that. So, you know, then our, our wonderful friend, Shauna Froyum says, the Lord put it on my heart to ask you, do you guys want an espresso machine? We said, we got a dance. We got espresso. So if you are at our house church, we just got upgraded. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got upgraded. So then we bought for our new house that me and my wife got, we, we bought this big, huge rug carpet because they're hard floors. And we thought it was thick, but then it's not that thick. And we're like, man, we need to get a pad under here so we could really just lay out in the spirit and pray and worship and the pad was like as much as the carpet. They're like six, seven hundred dollars. I was like, what? Well, then um, our friend Rodney, who doesn't normally come to our house church, I did invite him, comes over to the house church and says, hey, I got, a, I got a brand new carpet pad that I could put under. Would you like that? I said, yes, we would like that. <laughs> I'm not asking people. I'm not doing anything. You know, um, can I get a couple of tissues? And this has been just the, just a couple. Yeah, thank you so much. Can we get a round of applause for Abby reading the word? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so my last house, I, I really liked my house to match. How many of you guys like your furniture? Everything is like matching. Some people are okay with it, you know, looking different. They like the colors, but I like it to all coordinate. And so my last house, we, I ended up having to get rid of all the furniture and so I needed furniture. And for this new house, God just started bringing everything to me. So I got, we, got, we, we talked about how we wanted a king-size bed. Because when we went to Croatia on our honeymoon, they all, the, what do they call those, Airbnbs? They always have the king-size beds there usually. And we're like, we like this. This is awesome. I like to just, there it is. Can't even see my wife. We usually call each other. We're like, hey, babe, how was your morning? I don't know. It's pretty good. Like, we're like, what do you want to do today? I don't know. Should we meet in the living room? <laughs> but we love the king-size bed. And those beds begin to, 
So that bed just came to us, but it didn't just come to us just a bed. It was like brand new, and it had all of the matching dresser and the pieces. And my sister was just like, hey, we were going to keep this, but because um, we're selling our house and they need to sell it right now, we don't have a place for it. Do you just want to have this? I said, thank you, little sister. Carly, I bless you. Thank you so much. Then people gave us furniture and all of the furniture matched and people gave us lamps and just, I, I mean, I remember I said, I'm like, man, I really want a coat rack. And then all of a sudden a coat rack comes to me and it matches all of my stuff. So you know it's like Jesus because it's not just random stuff. It's like God's, our, our room was almost, everything our house was almost given to us and it all matches, okay? All of my, my houses, for as, as far as I can remember, since I really started following the Lord, have, have, been give, have come to me, okay? It wasn't a striving. It wasn't an effort. And I'm not saying that there's not times where we don't like look for houses and look at the market, but I'm really starting to be convinced that I can save a lot more time if I just say, you just bring the house to me and I'll seek your kingdom and his righteousness, amen? Every time I got a house, it was, it, was, it was the cheapest thing on the market. My first apartment was a two-bedroom apartment in Bremerton for $525. Can you believe that? That, that $520, it had a, its own laundry room. It had like two living rooms, a kitchen, a bathroom, and two rooms. And it was all redone on the inside, right? So it was just amazing. And then I, got, I just kept continuing to get really nice houses, our last house, we made a request to the Lord. We said, these are the things we want. And we got all of those things. Um, so we, got, we have another, on our house now, we have this, it's like its own room, but it has its own roof. It's by, behind the house. It's not connected to the house. It's like its own little room. And they used to have a hot tub in there. And so it's all stoned and it, uh, it's got stones on the ground. And it eventually started getting rotten. So they took out all of the the walls because of the steam and not proper ventilation. But then the other day, um, she might be here. I'm drawing a blank, but uh, Sydney, that's right. So then Sydney calls me and she said, I didn't even ask for a hot tub, but I like a hot tub. It's in their heart somewhere. And she's like, hey, yeah, we just we're, got a guy, neighbor, he's getting rid of a hot tub. Would you like a hot tub? I was like, I happen to have a hot tub room with no hot tub. So yes, please. Uh, we'll take that. Um, what are some other ones? Oh, let's see. Just our bills. I mean, we, you know, when I was fighting the malaria and you guys were praying for me, I thank you for that. You know, I think I had like, I don't know, almost $200,000 in bills. And um, that was miraculously um, covered by the state of Washington. Um, we, we, we didn't have insurance at the time that we gave birth with Eden that was a bunch of 20,000 or something all covered um, so it's just it's been the story of our lives that we've just like our main priority and focus is the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says you know your father knows your needs but you also can just petition your father say hey father I'd really like to have this and we've just found that we've asked God for good things. And religion says you can't have good things. God says, I want to give you good things, but I want to make sure you can steward it. So what we need to do is we need to work with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to renew our minds and get our motives and our hearts right with the Spirit. But then we can just really, God will give us good things. You can get a, that new vehicle. You know, sometimes religion is just like, well, God, I just, this one breaks down every... Tuesday, and I'd want one that just breaks down maybe once a month, just once a month. No, he's good. I'm telling you, he's good. If you know the Father, he is good. And it reminds me of this scripture. You can just slap it up real quickly. Um, Matthew 7, 11. Hallelujah. Okay. And the scripture says, if you then being evil, you're talking to us, okay, well, we need some help. Know how to give good gifts to your children. Now here's the key to break a mindset. 
is I looked at the way that my heart overflows and wants to give good gifts to Eden. And I'm like, if I don't want to punish Eden if she makes a mistake, if I want to give her good gifts, if I want to give her the best thing, not just some hand-me-down, I want the best for her. I'm willing to pay anything it is for her to be blessed. How much more the Father? And that's what it says right there. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So clothing, housing, material things, the things of your needs, you don't need, he says you don't even need to ask him. Your father already knows. You, but if you want those things, you seek his kingdom and his righteousness, those things will be added. But there are some good things that, we can, that are not necessarily our needs, right? I don't need a brand new Ferrari, but Lord, I'll give it away someday. I'll sew it, but just bring it to me just as, you know. But we can ask for good things, right? But really nothing in my life, my treasure is not, it's not stored up here on earth. So I have, I have come to the terms that anything in my life I'm willing to get rid of, anything I'm willing to sacrifice. And Abraham was even willing to sacrifice his son. I'm willing to sacrifice anything in this world, including myself, for the kingdom. And when we get that thing straight, when we get that straight thing in alignment, he'll say, no, like Abraham, he says, no, we're, we were never, it was never the plan to take Isaac. I just needed to know that the kingdom was first and my righteousness. So now I'm going to bless you and many nations. And actually my Messiah, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings will come through your loins and everybody will remember your name. You'll be the father of this generation. Say, we want that. So it says, but seek the first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, if you look that up, it's not like God will bless you. It means they literally come to you. It says put to you, added to you, meaning that it comes to you. And what I realize is, is that there's a thing called a blessing on your life, and it works like a magnet. And the blessings out there that are yours, it begins to magnetize to you. And that's why miracles will follow you when you go. But when you get your life into the kingdom and you, and you seek his righteousness and your priorities are in line, these things will just happen. I'm beginning to discover that I don't have to pray for as much as I think I used to. And we're praying for things really because we're just not in alignment with the kingdom. So we're praying for relief and mercy and, and change. And he's like, look, you wouldn't have these issues if you just got your life in order with my kingdom and my righteousness. Amen. So the more that I have been on this journey of refining and growing and correction and changing and pruning and letting go and getting my life in alignment with his kingdom, I've been seeing all the promises and the blessings flow. So I'm here to tell you I'm not anything special. I'm just a kingdom citizen. I'm a son just like you. And I just figured out that his kingdom comes first, his righteousness. And so I knew that I don't know what the heck that means. When you read a scripture and you're like, yeah, that sounds cool. His kingdom is right. Well, what is, the heck is that? What is his righteousness? What is, is that word? So we begin to go on a journey to discover like, okay, I got to find... How can I seek his kingdom and his righteousness if I don't know what that is or what that looks like? And so we begin to, go, begin to go on a journey, all of us leaders in this house, of like, what does the word say? So we can, we can equip you with the kingdom. Okay, so we're going to bring a context. So Matthew 6, all of this stuff involves the kingdom, but it's, it's, it talks about three things. It talks about giving, praying, and fasting. So this must be what God is talking about is a way to seek the kingdom. But he's saying there's a way that you could seek the kingdom like the Pharisees with the wrong heart, and I will not hear from you. So he's saying there's a way to pray, there's a way to fast, and, 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 and there's a way to give, and it's, and it's for the king, kingdom and his purposes. Let your prayer life be centered to what is your will. Let your fasting be centered. I need to know you more. What's your will? I want to agree with you on the earth. I want to seek your kingdom, your righteousness. Let me give into the things that are expanding your kingdom. 
Let me give into your purposes. God, what do you want to do on the earth? Because if you give into something that's not his kingdom, it will not produce fruit for you. So there are many hurt people that I've seen that they're, they're giving and sowing these seeds and they heard about the principle. Well, if I sow a seed, 30, 60, 100 is going to come back. Give, give, give. But they're giving to all the wrong places. So it's important. And, and it's just, I'm so grateful for our house and our family that we know that this is a good place with good soil because we've seen many reap a harvest from their sowing here. So that would give us evidence by fruit that this is good soil. Amen. And it's so funny. I just want to let you know that God is leading this church. God is leading this church. And sometimes I feel that we just, we, we, we're looking at like, you know, oh, Amy's the worship leader and, 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 and oh, Tom's leading or preaching. And that's not really it. it it's, a, it's a bunch of people that are unified, that are submitted to his spirit. And his spirit is leading this church because almost every time these worship songs are literally like the message. I didn't talk to them. I didn't say pick these worship songs. No, Amy seeks the face of the Father. Say, Lord, what, how do you want to be worshipped? How do you want to be glorified? What's the song you want to hear to bring glory to your name? And, and it's literally, we're, gonna, we're reading the Bible about the Lord's Prayer. Like that's, I'm like, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer today. We don't do that every Sunday. But we sing a song about the Lord's Prayer. Then he talks about the kingdom come in our hearts. And I'm just dancing up here. I'm like, God, that is, this is God speaking to you. This is the creator speaking through you. So every time you come here, I just want to encourage you to be expectant of what God is going to do. And what I've found is, even in my own life, is that I haven't been able to receive from men because I look at the man and I don't look at the God on the man. And if you look at men they, and you know them, they can be familiar. My wife, I see her every day. If she, she looks at me like a man when it comes to things that she needs from God concern. If I look at her the same way, because she has, there's, a, there's God on her. There's a grace on her. There's something that she has that I need. She's my other half. We both need something. And I have to be able to see the God on her. And that's what I'm beginning to honor and pull from. And so it's just so important for us that when we come here on Sunday, that we're, like, we're expecting to hear from God. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting to hear from Apostle Tom. I'm expecting to hear from the God that he serves, the God that I know that he's in, that's in him, the God that's friends with him. Does this make sense? So next Sunday, I want us to come and just be and saying, God, what do you have for me? Because if you come expecting to hear from God, God will use me as a vessel to speak for your blessing or whoever's up here, whoever's leading, whoever's speaking. He will speak something that you need for your breakthrough. But it starts with understanding that the spirit of God is the one that orchestrates this meeting. So then we lead the Lord's prayer. And what is he saying? Kingdom first. So the Lord's prayer is a, is a prayer based upon the kingdom. Honor the father kingdom first his will be done on earth the kingdom of God has always been in heaven and he created earth so he could colonize earth with his kingdom and he started with a man named Adam which was called a son of God and his plan was to reign through the sons his kingdom on earth and take dominion and rule and then we gave over that authority to Satan and then he's and then as he, he began to rule his kingdom through families through patriarchs through Abraham and this line of of families that God used to he, he, he reigned through that kingdom on the earth and then he made a covenant with the people of Israel and, and he, then he began, they were supposed to, his kingdom was supposed to reign through them into all the earth. And then they, 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 they dropped the baton and then they, and then all of the kingdom was offered to every man that would come in through the blood of Jesus. And then they said that this kingdom is an invisible kingdom. You cannot see it, but it's within and anybody that wants to enter the kingdom must be born again. So then we become born again in a, in a, a new citizen of a new kingdom. This kingdom is in men's hearts. Okay. And, 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 and then the way that the father says, now there's going to be a fullness of when I come back, I will, my, my kingdom will be fully manifested. 
Everything you see in the world and everything in the natural will come under the jurisdiction of his kingdom. But that's still his goal now that the kingdom is ruling and reigning in his hearts and in his church. And now we're going out, bringing people into the kingdom. And when they come into alignment with the kingdom, their life is transformed. Their life is transformed. Shalom, Mama. It says, seek first the kingdom and then seek your own affairs. Oh, wait. Sorry, that wasn't in there. There is no second plan. There is no second kingdom. It's just seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That's it. Close the story. Okay? So get out your notes. I want you to write this. So if we're going to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, we're going to break this down. Number one, write down, seek the king. Because a kingdom is the rule and reign of a king. So if I'm going to seek his kingdom, I have to seek the king first and the king's interest. Are you with me? Then the second part is actually seeking the kingdom. You seek the king, then the kingdom, which is the domain of the government of the king. Now, there's two parts that I see really, and these are just basic parts. There's probably more, but there's two parts that I see in the kingdom. There has to, to do with the rule of the kingdom. Write that down, the rule of the kingdom. And on earth, that's the, right, the government of the church. The rule of the kingdom, the government of the church. And then it has to do with the reign of the kingdom. The expanding of new territories, the expanding of the kingdom. So first we need to seek the king and his interests and his will and begin to develop an intimate relationship with the king. Then we need to seek his kingdom, which has two parts in it. One, it's begin to be a part of the body of Christ and start serving at and, and, and then becoming lead, uh, a leader in the body. Because as we expand and we multiply, we need more leaders. So everybody has the opportunity to continue to be a governor or a leader in his kingdom. But we need to start like Jesus did and wash people's feet. Does that make sense? Then the second part is expanding the kingdom. And then his righteousness, right? The third part is his righteousness, his righteousness. This has to do with three different things, right? One, order. Everybody say order with me. Two, just you can put morality or ethics of the kingdom. And three is lawful, lawful. So his righteousness means to, to be in right standing with him. Okay, so we see the third one is to, to obey the laws of the kingdom. But the issue that a lot of people are having is the Pharisees were obeying the laws, but they weren't doing it in the moral of the kingdom. Does that make sense? So, and then some of us, we're doing it, but not in the order of the kingdom. So, um, King David wanted to take the presence of God, the ark, and he didn't do it in the right order. And the, the way the ark was supposed to travel was on the priest's shoulders. And so they were is traveling on a cart and a, it bumped off the cart. And then Uzzah tried to st stop it and died instantly because it was a breach against the Lord's order. So it's so important that we get our life into his order. So I'm going to, as time is pressing on, I'm going to quickly go over just to give you a few principles. So seek the king. I'm going to go a little faster so you can take notes later. But seek the king requires what Jesus said. It says, pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. So to seek the king, you have to, you have to deny yourself, right? And give him your first fruits. And deny yourself early in the morning and seek his face in prayer and seek him and say, God, what is your will? 
What is your will? So seeking the king is seeking his will and his voice. His will and his voice. Tom is my spiritual father. He's my apostle, but he's also my boss. I work for the, you know, for the church. And so I have to seek his will and his voice to carry out what he believes God is telling this us to do. And so it's just as simple as if you had a boss, right? And you got a job, you would need to seek that boss and find out what his plan and will is because it's not your company and find out what he says to do and follow that instruction, amen? If you don't, where we, how long would you be working there? Not long at all, hallelujah. We can understand these things in the world, but why not the kingdom? So we can commune with him through prayer, intimacy through worship. Your ministry starts with the king, period. That's, so you need to do it in the right order. He says, seek my kingdom and his righteousness. So the first thing, and then the king is the highest of the kingdom. So it's important to understand when the scripture says, do this, that, and this, you don't do three before one, or you won't have success. You were not doing it in the order. So seek the king. That's your ministry to minister to him, then his kingdom purposes, and then his righteousness to make sure that you're in alignment with his kingdom. How many of you know that if you came with, from America to China and you behaved exactly like you, you do in China, that something bad might happen to you? You go tell people about Jesus, it's for legal here. Is, you know, how many know that? I need you to wave that if you go to another nation and you come with the same laws, it will cause you a problem. So some of us, we're coming to another nation, the kingdom of God, but we're still abiding by the laws of the world. And so if I go to, you know, Burkina Faso, it is my job to understand the laws. Well, Gail helps me. God bless Gail. She's because I'm not the best at that. But that's why we have leaders. She knows those laws and helps me say, you need to understand this when you go there. So thank God for Gil. Um, but if I go there, it's my responsibility to understand the culture of the nation and to understand the laws and the king and all of that and to come in alignment with that. And so sometimes what I think is, is we just t we don't do that. We don't study the word to say, God, what, what's your heart say? What's your kingdom say? What's your righteousness? We just don't do that. And it makes total common sense for us to go into another nation to do that. Well, if I go into a new nation, there's new laws, you know, and different consequences. So in the kingdom of God, there's new laws. There's new, there's new morals. There's a new culture. And when you find out what that is, then you, and you come in alignment with that kingdom, you can be blessed. There are benefits that citizens have by being in the kingdom, right? There's many governmental programs here that if you're a citizen, you can apply for it. You can apply for grants. You can apply for aid. You can apply for help. There's all kinds of help from the government. But if you have a felony and you're out on the run from the police, you're not going to be able to, to, to receive those benefits, because you're not abiding by the law. And some of us here are having demons torment us. We're having problems in our life, problems in our marriage, because we're not in alignment with his kingdom. Many of our problems are not, it's, it's our own lack of stewardship, of responsibility to go in and find out what the kingdom says and get our, our lives in alignment with this kingdom. Today, I need you to, to leave this place and say, God, I need to search. I need to search your word. I need to get my life in alignment with your laws of your kingdom. Okay. So the rule of the kingdom. So seek first the king, the rule of the kingdom. We have been delegated leaders and stewards of different portions of his kingdom. Everyone in the family has a responsibility. If you're not responsible for something in this family and in his kingdom, you're already out of order. Everybody has a responsibility. Dad usually has a bigger responsibility in the house, right? 
Everybody has a responsibility. There was the man with the parables of the talents. One had one, two, five. Is that correct? One, two, five. So they had different levels of stewardship and responsibility and were entrusted with different levels. But it doesn't say that and one had zero. Everybody in the kingdom has a responsibility. How well you, listen to me, church, how well you steward your position in the family of God reveals the kingdom priority in your life. Many of us serving in the, in the kids or something like that is not the highest priority in our life. I don't care if we're at the door or if we're serving coffee. That is the kingdom responsibility. That is seeking his kingdom first. And the level of honor that you have for that position and the level of faithful and stewardship that you have to that position will be the level that God trusts you with more. But if you're not, if you don't have a responsibility in this family, ask. There's plenty of things to do. And we have to, we have to be getting in alignment with this kingdom. I'm wondering this question. If we asked in everything we do, God, is this thing before your kingdom? I think we would be, it'd be hard on us to realize how much of our life is not along with his kingdom. Following the master, the Lord, our savior is not easy. And it requires a new level of laying things down, of denying self and saying your kingdom first. And even our Messiah was asking, is there a way out of this thing? I'm about to be crucified. Are you sure this is the only way? Okay, Father. I don't know if I really feel at this moment of like wanting to do this, but your kingdom first and your righteousness. And he laid down his life so that we could have life. Thank you, Lord. So the reign and expansion of the kingdom, let's simplify this for you. There's two parts. There's the salvation of people and the expanding of his rule in our hearts. There's two, two ways that the kingdom is expanded, okay? Because the way that it's expanding on the earth is not by, you know, bombing some territory and taking it over. It's by preaching the gospel, the good news that can get people born again. They're born into the kingdom and now they can come into the family, get their life in alignment with the kingdom. And now the kingdom has just been expanded. Amen. Imagine if the United States governed, were governed how this church is governed. What would this nation be like? We got to get, we got to preach the word. So one way to expand the kingdom. And so that's where you should be putting your money. Always be putting your money on people that are preaching the gospel. That's pretty good soil. It's expanding the kingdom. But then also we're working with the Lord. And that's what we do here. We have inner healing, breaking curses, deliverance, renewing minds. Because that, what that is, is there's a portion of the kingdom that God has, but we're not fully being ruled and reigned in every area of our heart and our life by the kingdom. So as we get inner healing and we get freedom, now God's kingdom begins to expand in our heart and rule and reign. So these are two ways that we can ex expand the kingdom. The righteousness, we're almost done here, we'll end on this. So the, <clears throat> the order of the kingdom so the righteousness of the kingdom, I said there's three. We have the order of the kingdom. Fit into the body and submit. Fit into the body and submit. The hand must be submitted to the wrist. And the wrist must be submitted to the arm. 
And the arm must be submitted to the shoulder, the government of God. And the shoulder must be submitted to the head. Everybody's got to get a, be a part of this family and be submitted. That is the proper order. There needs to be accountability. Everybody's accountable. Even from the apostle down, he's accountable to another apostle. So when you get into alignment and, get, and submit to the body, fit into the body, find where you fit, sit and submit, okay? You need to get your marriage in order. There's an order to the marriage. We've been talking about these videos in, in videos before. You need to go back and look at our teachings. But the, the, the Jesus is the head of the husband. The husband's the head of the wife. The, the parents are head of the kid. So if the parents are ruling, the, the, parent, uh, the children are ruling the parents or the wife is ruling over the man, it's out of order. So you can't expect it to be blessed. And if you're out of order, the enemy can come. He can come into your house. The order is, is very, very important to the Lord. He set it up for a reason. So these are just ways that we need to get our... Uh, we need to get our house in order. We need to get our marriages in order. We need to submit to the body. We need to have our children in order. Disciplining children is not easy. But if we need to take a season to be intentional about going above and beyond and spending extra time bringing correction, bringing teaching, helping them understand responsibilities and teaching our children the why. Teach our children why we're asking them to do that. Then the prior priorities in, in order. So this is very important. I drink coffee in the morning, but it's not the, the most important thing to my order. The first, the order is seek God first in his kingdom and his righteousness. So sometimes this can be simply, I'm asking to be excused of this obligation that I to the church so I can go over here and do this obligation over here and this obligation is actually lower than that order so we really need to be praying about what's what's in proper order even in your ministries like the proper order is for me to serve my apostle and to serve my wife that's my and my children and then those that are directly under my leadership so sometimes it, i'm help, you could be helping somebody else and it's really like you your 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 attention's divided you're not in order so there's many things that our life can be out of order in the, the other thing is, is our finances our i mean our priorities so if your priorities are out of order then you're out of order and that's why the, that's what's withholding the blessings and finally your finances need to be in order god says tithe he says give first fruits he says so he says do these things and he says make sure you do it towards my kingdom purposes and what my will and my voice what the king's interests so we don't we spend our money that way okay and the morals of the ethic the morals of the kingdom is the fruit of the spirit the character of jesus what the sermon of the mount it's the character of god and the laws of the kingdom are the commands of jesus the commands of the apostle the ordinances of the leadership of the church and the ten commandments those things that god commands so we need to be law-abiding citizen so in conclusion i'm standing here to tell you that I'm seeing the benefits of God. And in my journey, I realize that many of my, my, my heart, my life, my priorities, the order was, was not in alignment with the kingdom. And as I've been working towards positioning my life in the kingdom, I've been seeing all the blessings and I've seen the covering. And all of those promises automatically, they just begin to come into your life when you're in order and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So if everybody could stand, I wanna pray for you. I wanna lead us, this is voluntary, but it, I would like to lead us through some repentance. If everybody could say this after me, 
Say, Father, forgive me for not seeking the kingdom first and your righteousness. Forgive me for not studying your word and communing with you to find out what your kingdom is. I ask that you would show me every area of my life that's out of order with your kingdom. Show me everything I've prioritized above your kingdom and your righteousness. And I repent for that. Going forward, I will seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. Amen. Just lift up your hands. I'm going to say a blessing. Father, I thank you for everyone here. And I just pray right now that you would give them grace to seek your face. I thank you that you would give them grace to, to, to pursue your kingdom and its interests, grace to operate and walk in your righteousness. We ask that you would reveal to them revelations by dreams, by angels, that you would reveal to them every area that's not in alignment with the kingdom. And I pray this week that there would be a mighty revealing of those things that are not in the kingdom and that, that lives would shift into your kingdom and that you would bless your people, God. We thank you so much. We thank you very much. We love you, Jesus. I bless you as you go. And I say, Father, let your face shine upon them. Give them grace. Keep them and keep them in your peace. Amen. I bless you as you go. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were blessed and encouraged. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content.